Catherine Silva is a two-time Maine Literary Award finalist for speculative fiction. She's a member of the Horror Writers of Maine, the Horror Writers Association, and New England Horror Writers Association. Her latest book, The Wild Dark, is now available wherever books are sold. Catherine, it's yours. Thank you for having me on today. Um, so my name is Catherine, and I will be reading a section from The Wild Dark. Um, just to give you an idea of what The Wild Dark is, it's a supernatural horror novel um, about an ex-cop who is trying to survive an apocalyptic forest that's taking over the world while being haunted by the ghost of her dead partner. So I will be reading from chapter one today. If I can get to the right page, here we go. Dreams cocooned me, wrapping me in their silky embrace like a thousand scarves. I didn't care if I never woke. In them, I wasn't guilty. I wasn't alone. All was as it should be, but something yanked me out before I was ready to leave. I opened my eyes to the darkened room. Rain poured, out, rain, rain poured outside, its white noise a strange comfort outside my bedroom window. I pulled the thick wool blanket closer. The small room had put me on edge at first, before I knew where everything was. As the days passed, I recognized the outline of the chair next to the door, the trunk full of blankets at the end of the bed, and the small flickers from the fire in the wood stove outside my bedroom door. This place had become more than a temporary retreat. I turned onto my side and looked out at the rain. Why did I wake up? A board creaked on the porch. I stilled. It wasn't the old cabin making its usual sounds. The structure groaning in the wind, pipes rattling, treads loosening on the stairs out front. This was something heavy, walking across the floor of my front porch towards my door. No one lived within several miles of this camp. I was in the middle of the woods. I slipped my legs out from under the covers, goosebumps instantly growing on my skin. Quietly reaching behind the side table, I curled my fingers around the baseball bat there. An inch of safety nudged me as I tiptoed to the window and peered out. The bushes blocked most of my view, and the downpour made it hard to make out any shapes in the night. It could be anything, I told myself, as I slid my sweatpants from the top of the chest and pulled them on. I crept toward the main living area. Another window looked out onto the deck next to the front door. I steeled myself as I looked out. The deck was cloaked in shadows. To my left was an upright shape, a person walking in an ungainly way. They shifted back and forth as though they couldn't get their balance. Must be some drunk hunter looking for a place to sleep it off, I thought. I kept a firm hold on the baseball bat and moved to the front door. The memory of my days as a cop rushed back to me like an old friend. It had been months since I'd carried a badge, but more than anything, I wanted to see the look on this guy's face when I ripped open the door and shouted for him to get down on the ground with his hands behind his head. He'd probably pee his pants. He'd probably stumble off the deck and run back into the rain from wherever he'd come from. Then I could get some sleep. The creak stopped in front of the door. I braced myself, my hand on the doorknob. As I studied, as I readied myself to jerk open the door, cowardice got the better of me. Who's there? I called. There was no answer, not even the sound of another footstep. Hello? Do you need help? Are you lost? Nothing. The rain was pretty loud. Maybe they hadn't heard me. I turned the knob. Drowned by the deluge in the wind, a faint voice blended with the static ambient. Liz. My name. They said my name. As quickly as I could manage, I jerked the door open and swung my bat up. Who the hell is? My voice echoed into the empty night. I frowned and stepped out onto the deck, looking from left to right. There was nobody. 
I stopped at the end of the deck and stared into the bushes. Water splashed against my bare toes as I tried to find some shape hiding within. I couldn't have been hearing things. There'd been a shape out here. The creaking was loud. I checked the other side of the deck. No one. There weren't even any wet shoe prints on the wood. A twig snapped in the trees. I trained my sights on them, squinting through the deluge and the dark. Something stood there, staring straight at me. The eyes were golden, barely catching the licks from the firelight from within the house. A low growl rose up. I took a step back, a board squealing under me. I glanced down for only a moment. The brush rustled as something dashed off into the thicket. I backed into the cabin and locked the door behind me. The crackle of the wood stove seemed loud in the quiet space. I added another log to the fire and stirred the embers with my poker. I wasn't going crazy. Someone had been there, a human someone. Grabbing a fleece blanket from the chest in the other room, I curled up in the chair in front of the fire and stared through the glass window into the stove at the flames. I listened for anything out of the ordinary. I had to have imagined it all. I waited for sleep to take me, but I was too wired. The voice on playback in my mind. I forced my eyes to close and lay my head against the soft upholstery. The sounds of the rain merged with the crackling of the fire, washing in and out of my ears. The heat warmed my chilled skin, and the blanket suddenly became another world of comfort. Even in the sleep, that voice called to me from the darkness. I knew that voice. It knew me, too. No amount of sleep could change the impossibility of that voice's owner being here now. He was gone. He was dead and gone.